A Lit in Ten Reading with Lisa M. Kendrick. Poems by Percy Bysshe Shelley and John Keats. I met a traveler from an antique land who said, Two vast and trunkless legs of stone stand in the desert. Near them on the sand, half sunk, a shattered visage lies, whose frown and wrinkled lip and sneer of cold command tell that its sculptor well those passions read which yet survive, stamped on these lifeless things. The hand that mocked them, and the heart that fed, and on that pedestal these words appear. My name is Ozymandias, king of kings. Look on my works, ye mighty, and despair. Nothing besides remains round that decay of that colossal wreck, boundless and bare, the lone and level sands stretch far away. O oh, wild west wind, thou breath of autumn's being, thou from whose unseen presence the dead leaves are driven, like ghosts from an enchanter fleeing, yellow and black and pale and hectic red, pestilence-stricken multitudes, O oh, thou, who chariotest to their dark wintry bed, the winged seeds, where they lie cold and low, each like a corpse within its grave. Until thine azure sister of the spring shall blow her clarion o'er the dreaming earth, and fill, driving sweet buds like flocks to feed in air, with living hues and odors plain and hill. Wild spirit, which art moving everywhere, destroyer and preserver, hear, O oh, hear. Thou on whose stream, mid the steep sky's communion, loose clouds like earth's decaying leaves are shed, shook from the tangled bough of heaven and ocean, angels of rain and lightning, there are spread on the blue surface of thine airy surge, like the bright hair uplifted from the head of some fierce maneed, even from the dim verge of the horizon to the zenith's height, the locks of the approaching storm. Thou dirge of the dying year, to which this closing night will be the dome of a vast sepulchre, vaulted with all thy congregated might, of vapours from whose solid atmosphere black rain and fire and hail will burst, O oh, hear! Thou, who didst waken from his summer dreams, the blue Mediterranean where he lay, lulled by the coil of his crystalline streams, beside a pumice isle in Bay's Bay, and saw in sleep old palaces and towers quivering within the waves' intenser day, all overgrown with azure moss and flowers, so sweet the sense faints picturing them. Thou, for whose path the Atlantic's level powers cleave themselves into chasms, while far below the sea blooms and the cozy woods which wear the sapless foliage of the ocean know thy voice, and suddenly grow gray with fear and tremble and despoil themselves, O oh, hear! If I were a dead leaf thou mightest bear, if I were a swift cloud to fly with thee, a wave to pant beneath thy power, and share the impulse of thy strength, only less free than thou, O oh, uncontrollable, if even I were as in my boyhood, and could be the comrade of thy wanderings over heaven. As then, when to outstrip thy skyey speed, scarce seemed a vision, I would ne'er have striven as thus with thee in prayer in my sore need. O oh, lift me as a wave, a leaf, a cloud. I fall upon the thorns of life, I bleed. A heavy weight of hours has chained and bowed one too like thee, tameless and swift and proud. May thy, may thy leer, even as the forest is. What if my leaves are falling like its own? The tumult of thy mighty harmonies will take from both a deep autumnal tone, sweet though in sadness, 
Be thou, spirit fierce, my spirit, be thou me, impetuous one. Drive my dead thoughts over the universe like withered leaves to quicken a new birth. And by the incantation of this verse, scatter as from an unextinguished hearth, ashes and sparks, my words among mankind. Be through my lips to unawakened earth, the trumpet of a prophecy. O oh, wind, if winter comes, can spring be far behind. An old, mad, blind, despised, and dying king, princes, the dregs of their dull race, who flow through public scorn, mud from a muddy spring, rulers who neither see, nor feel, nor know, but leech-like to their fainting country cling, till they drop, Blind in blood without a blow, a people starved and stabbed in the untilled field. An army which liberticide and prey makes as a two-edged sword to all who wield golden and sanguine laws which tempt and slay religion Christless, godless, a book sealed, a senate, Time's worst statue unrepealed are graves from which a glorious phantom may burst to illumine our tempestuous day. When I have fears that I may cease to be, before my pen has gleaned my teeming brain, before high-piled books in charactery hold like rich garners the full ripened grain, when I behold upon the night's starred face huge cloudy symbols of a high romance, and think that I may never live to trace their shadows with the magic hand of chance. And when I feel, fair creature of an hour, that I shall never look upon thee more, never have relish in the fairy power of unreflecting love, then on the shore of the wide world I stand alone and think till love and fame to nothingness do sink. Seasons of mists and mellow fruitfulness, close bosom friend of the maturing sun, conspiring with him how to load and bless with fruit the vines that round the thatch eaves run, to bend with apples and mossed cottage trees, and fill all fruit with ripeness to the core, to swell the gourd and plump the hazel shells with a sweet kernel, to set budding more, and still more, later flowers for the bees, until they think warm days will never cease, for summer has o'erbrimmed their clammy cells. Who has not seen thee oft amid thy store? Sometimes whoever seeks abroad may find thee sitting careless on a granary floor, thy hair soft lifted by the winnowing wind, or on a half reaped furrow sound asleep, drowsed with the fume of poppies, while they hook spares the next swath and all its twined flowers, and sometimes like a gleaner thou dost keep steady thy laden head across a brook, or by a cedar press with patient look thou watchest the last oozing hours by hours. Where are the songs of spring? Ay, where are they? Think not of them, thou hast thy music too. While barred clouds bloom the soft dying day and touch the stubble plains with rosy hue, then in a wailful choir the small gnats mourn among the river sallows, borne aloft are sinking as the light wind lives or dies. And full-grown lambs loud bleat from hilly bourne, hedge crickets sing, and now with treble soft the red breast whistles from a garden croft, and gathering swallows twitter in the skies. Thou still unravished bride of quietness, thou foster child of silence and slow time, sylvan historian, who canst thus express a flowery tale more sweetly than I rhyme? What leaf-fringed legend haunts about thy shape of deities or mortals or of both? In Tempe or the dales of Arcady, what men are these? What maidens loath? What mad pursuit? What struggle to escape? What pipes and timbrels? What wild ecstasy? Heard melodies are sweet, but those unheard are sweeter. Therefore yet soft pipes play on, not to the sensual ear, but more endeavored pipe to the spirit ditties of no tune. Fair youth beneath the trees, thou canst not leave thy song, nor ever can those trees be bare. Bold lover, never, never canst thou kiss, though winning near the gold, yet do not grieve. She cannot fade, though thou hast not thy bliss, for ever wilt thou love, and she be fair." And happy, happy boughs that cannot shed your leaves, nor ever bid the spring adieu. And happy melodist, unwearied, forever piping songs forever new. 
More happy love, more happy, happy love, forever warm and still to be enjoyed, forever panting and forever young, all breathing human passion far above, that leaves a heart high, sorrowful and cloyed, a burning forehead and a parching tongue. Who are these coming to the sacrifice? To what green altar, O mysterious priest, leadest thou that heifer lowing to the skies? And all her silken flanks with garland dressed, what little town by river or seashore, or mountain built with peaceful citadel, is emptied of this folk, this pious morn? And, little town, thy streets forevermore will silent be, and not a soul to tell why thou art desolate can e'er return. O attic shape, fair attitude, with breed of marble men and maidens overwrought, with forest branches and the trodden weed, thou silent form dost tease us out of thought and stuff eternity, cold pastoral. When old age shall this generation waste, thou shalt remain in midst of other woe than ours, a friend to man to whom thou sayest, beauty is truth, truth beauty, that is all ye know on earth and all you need to know. Thanks for stopping by. Nothing enhances cognitive abilities, increases vocabulary, or expands horizons more than reading. Be sure to check out my other videos in this Lit in 10 discussion series.